usually in these kind of open segment things, you're supposed to do something interesting to grab the viewer's attention in the first couple of seconds. Ta-da! Welcome to Fuzzy Walrus Industries. I'm Walcom S7, and today I'm dual wielding shotguns. I'm in my happy place. It's time for Tag Back, the show where every week we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it can offer us today in the present. And this time, it's the Busby Double Shot. These are both called the Double Shot, even though one is a side-by-side -side configuration and the other is an over-under configuration, although both blasters are pretty much the same thing. One's just newer. In fact, this one came out in 2003. That's an old blaster, and this one is still being made today. In fact, in Busby's new lineup in 2017, they are still producing the Double Shot. Why? Because it's super freaking fun. In fact, it's one of the most fun blasters I have ever used. And I happen to own like 400-something shells and 600 darts from a pack that I bought on Amazon, which is the best purchase I have ever made, because a lot of these old Busby blasters use those shells, and the shells are kind of a controversial point. They are fun, but they do suck. We'll get into that. But the first thing we're going to be looking at is, of course, the original side-by-side -side Busby double shot. These things are pretty deceptively simple to use. All you have to do is put your thumb on the barrel release right here and pull the barrel down, which not only primes the blaster, but reveals the breech where you stuck your shells into it, and there's shell storage in this kind of cheek rest stock area. Take those things out, Orange shells with darts shoved into them. These are, of course, Busby darts. And you just push the shell in there until it clicks and it's loaded. Close the breech, close that if you want, and you're ready to go. And much like many other double barreled kind of things, it does have one trigger, but it catches in two places. So if you pull the trigger slowly, you get one shot. If you pull the trigger quickly, you're going to get both. And it makes it really easy compared to things like the Nerf Barrel Break or, in fact, the Rough Cut to fire one dart at a time. In fact, I'm willing to bet that you can use this one dart at a time every single time you fire it. And it's pretty darn cool. Now, you notice one of those darts didn't come out. That's kind of the problem with this version of the Double Shot. It has a lot of dead space. When you put these shells in, there's actually about that much dead space between where the end of the plunger tube meets up and then, of course, where the shell is, which means there's not good air delivery. But the best part is, when you open this thing to reload, it launches out the shells. Or, this one didn't get launched out because the dart didn't come out in time. <sighs> but it's the original, and we have to give it the uh, showing it deserves. But, in all honesty, I don't really like this one all that much. I've never really liked the side-by-side -side shotguns. I much prefer an over-under, which of course I do have. This is more my speed. This is the double shot over-under configuration because the barrels are on top of each other. And I like this one a lot more. And operation is just about the same. You're going to press down on the barrel release and crank the barrel down, which primes the blaster. Open up the stock area, take out your shells, make sure the darts are all nicely stuffed into them and go ahead and put those into the breech. These ones are a little bit more finicky in my opinion. Come on, there we go. There we go. Sometimes a little finicky. Again, pretty old blaster. This one's newer, but it's still kind of old. Slap that thing closed, put down your stock and you're ready to fire. And just like the other one, pull the trigger slowly, you'll feel two definite clicks, which lets you know that you can fire one at a time or just pull it quickly to fire both darts at the same time, basically. That was two darts. And, just like the other one, it does fling out the shells, albeit it's not exactly the same uh, performance on ejecting the shells. This one's a little bit less. Not entirely a bad thing, but, I mean, I guess too many kids had shells flying into their faces when they were reloading this thing, which I'm sure is a safety problem that Busby fixed in this design. And I like this one a lot more for practical reasons, because it's a lot thinner, which is way easier to holster into any kind of, you know, back sheath or of course a leg holster if you wanted to cut this thing down if you were going to use this thing for any kind of modification potential well first we have to explain that there is in fact two plunger tubes because of course it fires two shots which is great it's not at the same time so it actually is technically a pretty usable blaster the problem you will run into is twofold one you're using the shells Obviously, you can bypass the shells with some kind of PVC or make your own breach, which is pretty easy to do, and honestly, that's for the best. I like having the shells eject, so you can modify the shells. 
Except for if you're gonna use this thing in an actual war, you have to modify a lot of the shells, which kind of sucks. The next problem is when you prime this thing, you will notice this string right here, our piece of rope. That is actually what pulls down the plunger on your plunger tube. And there are rollers and everything in here to make sure that the blaster can actually perform this action. Of course, I'm pushing down here and pulling back right here. And those have a tendency to break off. You can reinforce them, but it's still kind of a pain in the butt. Most people, what they do is when they modify this thing, they will just drill a hole in the bottom. So what you can do is of course, prime it normally with no friction, which means it's really easy to flick down, reload, flip up, and then you just pull the string out and you're ready to go. A much better, more war practical option, but even when modified to their fullest extent, these things don't hit extreme ranges. It is usable and you do get two shots, but let's face it, a rough cut, especially if it's modified, although you have to worry about gears, is gonna un you know outperform this thing pretty much in full stop. Does that mean that this thing's awful? Not really. I mean, if you're good at using this and you really like the whole shell mechanic, then this is for you. And there's no better feeling than feeling like a complete badass when you're on the field using one of these things. But yeah, it's kind of a problem because shells, eh, not everybody likes those things. And I'm sure everybody has seen one of these at some point in your whole nerfing career. And maybe you've even seen one modified. I can find a lot of modifications online. Most of them involve cutting down the barrels and then of course, making the whole string priming option, which is kind of unique for something like this. But do you really have to worry about picking one up? No, not really. It's nothing super crazy special that's gonna outperform everything else out there. But if you have one or you've seen one and you like the shell mechanic and you're willing to put in the time and effort, there's a lot to love there. I do like this blaster. I don't know personally if I'll ever put the time and effort to make one good. There are other shotguns out there I actually appreciate more than this one, but it is pretty much the original, and in my opinion, it's one of the best. Let me know what you think about the Busby Double Shot down in the comments section below, and which one is your favorite? Do you like the side-by-side -side or the over-under? I'm really interested to see which people like what. I'm Walcom S7, thank you very much for watching this video, and of course I hope to see you in an entirely different one, and I do want to give special thanks to Captain Xavier for giving me this beautiful over-under Busby double shot, which I could never find and I didn't really want to buy online. They're like 15 bucks if you want one. Not too bad, but too much for me, in my opinion. Whatever. <laughs>